Hey everyone, my name is Kelwing, and today I will be showing you how to use KVM on Linux. To preface this, we will talk briefly about virtualization. When virtualizing, there are two types of hypervisors, type 1 and type 2. Type 2 hypervisors are the ones that most people know and use, programs such as VirtualBox, VMware Workstation, and VMware Fusion for you Mac users out there. These hypervisors run on top of the operating system, and all calls to the hardware must go through the OS. Type 1 hypervisors, on the other hand, run within the operating system and have direct access to the hardware. This leads to huge performance benefits. Some of the Type 1 hypervisors are Hyper-V, VMware ESXi, Zen, and the one that we'll be talking about today, KVM. KVM stands for Kernel-Based Virtual Machine, and it is included within the Linux kernel. I will be using CentOS 7.3 for this installation. It includes most of the tools that we, that we need to use KVM installed by default. So let's get started. The very first thing that we are going to have to do is disable SE Linux. SE Linux is just a security layer created by the United States Department of Defense that tries to impose uh, certain restrictions on the system to prevent attackers from gaining access to your system. Uh, for our purposes, we don't really need that. So let's go ahead and do that by issuing a sudo set enforce zero. So there we are. So now so SE Linux is set to permissive, which is effectively disabled. Um, then the next thing we'll have to do is ensure that QMU is installed. So QMU is just a nice little interface uh, that runs on top of KVM and basically it tells it what to do. So we'll go ahead and issue a sudo yum install qmu-kvm qmu-img. And on my system, it's already installed. Uh, depending on which uh, installation options you choose, it might already be installed on your system. The next thing we'll have to do is install vert manager. So this utility is the actual GUI that we will be using to, to talk to and interface with KVM. So um, I will go ahead and just uh, show you guys this and leave it here. Let's expand it so you guys can see what, you're, what you want. You can go ahead and pause the video and copy that down if you need. So we'll go ahead and run that. Say yes. There we go. We have Vert Manager installed. So there's one part of Vert Manager called libvertd that needs to be running at all times in your system. On CentOS, it is very easy to check whether or not that is running. We go ahead and we issue a sudo systemctl status libvertd. So right now, you can see it is not running. So we can go ahead and say sudo systemctl start libvertd and then check the status and we are A-OK. -okay. Up and running, good to go. We check again, make sure it's still running. All right. Um, that's all we need to do in the, in the terminal, guys. So now we can go ahead and move to the GUI tool that we had just installed, Virtual Machine Manager. If you were using GNOME on CentOS, it is under System Tools, Virtual Machine Manager. Go ahead and enter your user password, and you'll see this pop up right here. Go ahead and close that. All right, so QMU KVM, you can see that we have our subsystem here. The fact that there's no extra messages here means that we are good and we are connected. So we can go ahead and create a new virtual machine. So the first thing we so we just go ahead and select local installation media. This will allow an ISO on your system. So here in my home folder, documents, I have a Windows 7 ISO. So we're going to go ahead and hit forward. I'm going to browse to find an ISO. And then browse local to search the local file system. So here is our Windows 7 professional ISO. Go ahead and select that. Hit forward. All right, and now we can select the specs for our virtual machine. I'm going to go ahead and leave these the way they are because that's about half the specs that I have allocated to the CentOS machine. Uh, I've only got about 20 gigs total hard drive space allocated to this machine, and all but six and a half are currently being utilized. So we will go ahead and set that to six. Windows might have an issue with that, but I'm not actually going to complete the Windows installation. So um, just going to boot up the Windows installed CD and show you guys that hey, yes, this works. So go ahead and we'll create that VM. It'll start right up. If we expand the window, we can see the whole thing. You guys can see the Windows installer loading up. And that's pretty much it, guys. It's a really painless process. Let's you basically get a hypervisor that is just as uh, efficient, if not more efficient, than Hyper-V without having to pay any money to upgrade to Windows uh, Professional.
So, there you have it. Happy hunting.